Hello, you. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. Welcome to another week of being, another moment, another possibility of being more you. I'm really glad you're here. I'm really glad you're listening. And how does it get better than this? One of the first things I'd like to ask of you guys, if you're listening or you're a regular listener, and you could, if you could leave a five-star or any star review based on your point of view about the show on iTunes, that would be really great. I'm going to start asking for that more. Uh, you just have to go to your podcast app, scroll all the way down, search mine, scroll all the way down, and then leave a review. I have two Crystal Crawford Show podcasts thingies in iTunes, which is a little annoying. One's got 11 reviews, one's got five. Let's blow up the one with 11 reviews, all right? Um, I get a lot of feedback about the show, and I just love for the world to know that we exist. So I called this week's episode the top things to get about consciousness. Um, and of course, because this, I see all of you guys joining live and I'm so grateful you're here. Because this show is, you know, an exploration of consciousness, it's an exploration of consciousness using my world. Um, it's always much more personal than just, just a, a description of the tools, which is what I wanted to create. You know, I know that pretty much anybody can talk about something, not everybody can live it. And what I wanted to show you guys is what living the tools of consciousness is like. Um, so the top things you got to get about consciousness is actually going to start with a list of three things you've got to get about you. And uh, <laughs> this list of three things is basically coming directly from me and my life and everything that I'm changing right now and getting present with. And then we're going to get into the top things you really have to get about consciousness if what you want to have is a different reality. Here's the first thing that you got to get about you. There's nothing you can't change if you're willing. Just nothing. There's nothing you can't change if you're willing. Now, I'll put some caveats in that. You can't change other people. You can't change your family. You can't change anybody else. But you can sure as hell change something about you if you're willing. Um, I'm in the middle right now of a process where I am completely transforming the way that I function in regards to energies that I've historically put up a lot of barriers to. Um, I, you know, if you know a little bit about me, you know my story kind of, or maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I mean, I came through a lot of trauma in my life, you know, a lot of ab all the abuses, financial abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical, it was very, very diverse, in <laughs> religious abuse. Um, so being in my family was really intense. And, and I made it, I made it. That's the short version. Almost killed myself, didn't um, got myself here. So, you know, in creating that, and, and maybe you recognize yourself in that, I developed certain ways of being in the world that, you know, are constantly unraveling in to varying degrees. And at the moment, I'm in, in the process of unraveling a way that, of being in the world that it's like keeps a hyper vigilant watch on these particular energies and then goes into fight about them so that I can survive. And, and that's the short version, and maybe I'll do another video on that specifically, but I'm, I'm saying all that to say that this has probably been one of the more challenging things for me to face and for me to come through and outcreate in my world in order to have more of me, to have more of receiving, but there's nothing you can't change if you're willing. So you got to get that about yourself. You know, if you can get yourself here, you can change anything in your life. doesn't matter how impossible it has felt. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Um, when I found Access Consciousness, I had been doing $3,000 a month as an income for 20 plus years. And I didn't had no idea how to get above that. And after, you know, two years of playing with the Access Consciousness tools, I did outcreate that in a major way. And now I'm gonna make the next leap. There's nothing you can't change if you're willing. So my question to you is if you could change anything about your life, what would it be? Thing number two you got to get about yourself is you are simply powerful. You're powerful and you're creative. And, and that's what got you here. Uh, you created all these different ways of surviving and coping and, and scrapping your way here. You know, for some of you required less scrap than others. And some of you required extreme amounts of scrap. So, but you, that's the power of you as you got yourself here. 
So it isn't that you're not powerful and it isn't that you're not creative. Maybe you're feeling powerless in some of the things that you want to change in your life. And, and I get it. But it's not true about you. What's really true is that you can. And what does it take? What does it take to get access to the tools to have the change you're looking for? The third thing you have to get about yourself. You're stronger than you want to know. And this kind of used to piss me off when I was like coming through my 20s, I think I had a lot of people going, oh, my God, your life. How did you do it? You're so strong. And I used to kind of give them the energetic fuck you, give flip on the bird, you know, like, fuck you. What do you know about me? I'm not strong. Anyway, it's not true. It's not true. And it's not true about you. You're stronger than you want to know, meaning that anything you want to change, you can if you're willing, even if it feels like changing it will kill you you're strong enough to be with that and the fourth thing you got to get about you and consciousness and this is where we'll segue into the top things to get about consciousness is that consciousness supports you with everything you want everything you want it doesn't matter what it is you're supported and you know if you've been creating from unconsciousness or you've been creating you know shitty money reality shitty body reality shitty relationship reality it's okay you've been supported in that Consciousness just supports without a point of view. But at the moment you change it, the moment you choose something else, the moment you just ask the universe to show you what it would be like to have something else, you're supported in that. So that's the, that's maybe number one thing you got to get about consciousness is that it supports you in everything you choose. Unconscious choices and conscious choices, all choices, you're supported. So, you know, before access consciousness, before foundation, before all the primary classes that started giving me the tools and the information and the education and the change I required to start being able to participate actively in the creation of my life, I was just unconsciously doing the best I could with the tools I had available. Maybe you too, right? Uh, that's it. I mean, that sums it up. That's I was doing the best I could. You know, I was using the therapy I could find and the nutrition and the working out and the this and the that. I was pulling at everything to try to get access to some sort of assistance to be able to be happy. I had very low standards. I just actually it turns out wanting to be happy is one of the greatest asks of all time. But that to me, it felt really simple. It's like, I just want to be happy and I just want to be able to have good relationships. Those were my two asks when I found access. And uh, I, I didn't even want, I didn't even care about more money or a business or any of that just wanted to be happy. I'd spent like so many years sad, uh, so many years like feeling hopeless and powerless and oosh, I just wanted to be happy. And, and maybe, you know, so that's where I started. What, you know, you can look at where you're at in the journey right now, but whatever it is that you want, consciousness supports that. There is no ask too big, no ask too great, no ask too small, no ask that is irrelevance. It's simply that you ask and that you want and you're supported. So I think that's primary thing number one to get about consciousness is it supports you. And the more consciousness and awareness that you add to your world, more and the more possibilities you open yourself up to, the, the more your menu of what you can choose grows. I had a very, very small menu when I started Access. I, I mean, you know, we're all kind of products of the tools we have available and the people around us, you know, so we get to consciousness when we do and how we do. And my menu was pretty tiny. Like I, I didn't have a, I didn't have an, a sense of the spectrum about which I could ask. And it grows all the time, by the way, too, after eight years using the tools, like the, the spectrum only just continues to grow. I'm like, Oh my God, you can ask for that. Oh my God, you can ask for that is a consistent thing in my world. Um, but I guess my question to you with this conversation is like, what could you ask for? Maybe what haven't you asked for yet? What haven't you chosen yet? What could you ask for and choose that would give you access to it, that would allow the universe to support that showing up in your life? So that's, that's how consciousness works, is you're supported. What could you choose and what could you ask for it that would allow it to support you in a different way? Thing number two, you got to get about consciousness. Nothing is yours, like literally nothing. And 
this key, I think I talk about it in almost every show. I'm going to talk about the next key, and I talk about that one in almost every show, because key number three is you're aware. Nothing is yours, and you're aware, which is really kind of the same key. <sighs> Consciousness just includes everything, all energies, and it doesn't judge. So you move to Latin America, for example, and you get aware of all these other energies that aren't as dominant where you were living in North America. Consciousness just includes all those. What, what, what occurs for us, what occurred for me, is that I learned at a very young age to defend against energies, to protect myself from certain energies. And as a we being, as a small kid, that was required. But what starts happening as we grow up and we get older and we start having these greater asks and greater demands for a bigger life is that those exclusions of energy stop working because we can only receive what we're willing to be. And then we want more money, but we're not willing to be this and we're not willing to be that. But until we're willing to be those things, we can't receive money, for example. So, you know, our, our life, ex our, we want our life to expand. And in order for our life to expand, we have to be willing to include everything. Man, is that the journey of a lifetime, right? Like it's one thing to have that as cognitive information. It's another thing to live it, to work it into the way that you function. So, you know, all that heavy stuff that, that maybe you deal with on a, on a moment by moment basis, if it's heavy, it is not yours. It's not your reality. So what I find the thing to get about consciousness is that it includes everything, which means you then get to choose what you want to have as your reality. It's like consciousness is just this big supermarket that just includes all product lines, all products, all kinds of things, all whatever. You are the one that gets to walk into that supermarket and go, well, I'll have this and I'll have this. And you get to craft your reality out of what it is that speaks to you. And then consciousness supports that because consciousness doesn't have a point of view about what you buy in the supermarket, just that you bought it and that that's what you're having and that's what it supports. So that's the thing to get about consciousness is that everything is included. What would you like to have? And, and, and as I was beginning this whole conversation, which is like, uh, you know, you're having the, this conversation with me like eight years later after just so many classes and so much exploration. But in the beginning, like, like I said, all I, what I wanted was I just wanted to be happy. Tell me what it takes to be happy. And so it's like, it doesn't matter what you're asking for because what you're asking for will lead you to what's next for you. So what is your ask for what's next? And if it's heavy, it isn't yours. So what's the ask that you have that has more, that has space to it, that has that sense of like living to it for you, that gives your world a sense of expansion and possibility? What's that? You know, and that's when I started going, OK, what would it take to what would it take to have enough money to travel around to access class? This was my first ask, I think. You know, what would it take to live in a place that, that really nurtured me and, I started using what would it take to have and that started working because I couldn't fathom it in my mind. I couldn't make, I couldn't craft a reality from what I'd already experienced. I had to craft a reality from the possibilities available to me that I didn't know were available. And I could only get access to those possibilities by asking some different questions gift of a foundation class. Here, live, ask the question. Start asking these things. Start asking the universe to show you what's possible. Start asking the universe how it gets better than this. Start asking the universe what else is possible that I haven't considered. And the universe supports that. And these three simple little things that came from foundation that I just started using as if they'd work. And then they just worked. Because thank God, consciousness doesn't require your brain to function the way it does. It just requires the energy and the ask so that it can support it. So I started playing with that. And I started getting that the stuff that really lit me up, the stuff that really nurtured me and, and made my world come alive was never heavy. That stuff, that heavy stuff was always someone else's. It was always 
um, a lesser thing. It was always a lie. And what turned out to be true for me were these lighter, spacious, more energetic possibilities. I would say something like, I'm not a nice person, and I would discover that that wasn't light. And so then I would get to wonder, well, what's really true about me? That I never asked before because I just assumed I'm not a nice person was true. Nobody had ever, ever, ever empowered me to really wonder if it was true. And maybe that's another key thing to get about consciousness is like, it supports you. If you wonder, it will show you. So what could you wonder about today? Today, personally, I'm wondering about what it would take to go beyond d defending anything, protecting myself. And it, and it isn't even quite that. Like, try even putting words to what I'm wondering is a little bit limiting because what I'm wondering has this big, broad, expansive energy. And here's another great thing about consciousness. It doesn't require your English to work or your language because energy is and of itself its own language. And I know for a fact that access consciousness came into my life from an unworded ask. So it's not as relevant that you be able to word your ask, but simply that you know it and that you express it energetically. And the great thing is there's no how to that. You simply be it. So none of the heavy stuff's actually yours. The heavy stuff is what somebody else's version of reality that doesn't necessarily your reality. So maybe another thing to get about consciousness or about you is that you're a different kind of being. There's a, there's a few different kinds of beings on this planet. Two primarily. One is a human being, which we've been told we are. And the other is a humanoid being, which looks very much like a human being, but functions very different. And which one makes you lighter? When I discovered that I was a humanoid, it was probably one of the most pivotal pieces of information out that came out of my first foundation class. It was like, and it still today gifts me in all these different ways because humanoid beings don't function like human beings. They just look similar. They function completely other. Humanoid beings function from having way too many things to do, from getting bored really easily, from being able to put their attention on lots of things, from having a spherical awareness of everything from completing things in an instant and then wondering why nothing ever gets done. Humanoid beings are creative to the nth degree and most of the time have used their creativity to invent traps for themselves because the primary difference between human and humanoids is that humanoids judge themselves and humanoids judge them too. So humanoids, we most of us have used our energy to invent these gilded, or awful cages for ourselves where we can never be free. And consciousness supports that. But then enter access consciousness. Why access more consciousness in regards to our cages? Because consciousness opens the doors to all healing and to what's true. And if you circle back around to what's heavy is never true, and you look at the cages you've built for yourself, I can't ever, and I will never, and I would never, and I won't do this, and I can't be that, and I can never be like my mother, and I won't ever be like my father, and man, the list goes on and on and on. You look at all the cages you've invented for yourself, are any of them giving you more space to be? Are any of them giving you access to the choices you really have, or are they limiting everything you can choose based on what you can never be and shouldn't be and won't be. And so you come to a foundation class or, you know, any access class or even this conversation and you're like, what's beyond that? And their consciousness is supporting you, showing you, starts to show you what's beyond that. What is beyond judgment of you? If you were able to get so good at judging you, is it possible that you could get good at creating you? 
if you were able to get so good at protecting you, is it possible that that same power could create a totally different reality where you got to be? You get to get access to what's really true. What's really true is that some things are really heavy. And those are the things that aren't true for you. And that some things are really, really spacious and light and full of possibility. Those turn out to be what's true for you. You know, were you shown how to craft a reality based on the energies that are true for you? Or were you shown how to trap yourself? And maybe not from any malicious intent, maybe from people who thought they were caring about you and doing the best they could with the tools they had available. Maybe malicious, depends on who we're talking about. But what does accessing more consciousness gift you? More choice between what? Between all kinds of energies energies that have a certain density to them, energies that have more space to them. Which ones will you create from? Which ones have you created from? Historically for me, I created from a lot of dense energies because I was told those were the real ones. Those were the ones that had value and I should pay attention to because they were dense and they, they felt like something. Because they felt like something, that meant they were real. So I bought that and functioned from it for a long time and got myself to where I did get to, which was a fucking miracle <laughs> because those dense energies almost killed me. And then, I, and then I got to a foundation class and it was the first time I'd ever heard, hey, you know, you're a different kind of being and, and the way those dense energies work for other people, they don't work for you. Are they actually, they're not even true for you, but don't take my word for it, they said. You look at it. Do those dense energies give you a greater sense of space? Do they give you a greater sense of, of possibility? Do they expand your world? No. They made me feel heavier, sadder, harder. Hmm. Maybe those weren't true for me. That's what consciousness gave me access to. Consciousness didn't give me access to unicorns, magic, and rainbows necessarily except it showed me that unicorns, magic, and rainbows were a part of what was possible if I would like to have it. Nobody else had bothered to show me that. So consciousness includes unicorns, magic, and rainbows, and great realities, and it also includes tiny realities and, and, and abuse and horror, and it doesn't judge any of it. But what would I like to have? I didn't have to be limited to what everybody else told me was possible. I could have anything I wanted to have. I could continue to live as a 46 year old woman defending against energies that I was certain were gonna kill her. Or I could choose something else. And I wouldn't necessarily know how to live something else because I had never been shown and I would probably have to learn. And by probably mean definitely have to learn how to live in a different way, because what I've been shown so far is definitely not that. But I have the universe at my back. And consciousness supports me. And consciousness supports you. So the next thing you have to get about yourself, and maybe that's the retitling of this show, is that you have a capacity for choice and change. that No one else recognizes. You do. And I only know because you're here. Fuck, I'm here. <laughs> I had a session today with a, another certified facilitator friend of mine and, um, I just reached out to her. I'm like, help. And I'm so grateful that we have facilitators all over the world that you can choose sessions with. Because in 30 minutes, we were able to change something that I haven't been able to change in 46 years. But we really looked at today, you know, that 
I got here. I got here and created this living and I'm continuing, but like so far, holy shit. You know, from all the abuses to broke ass poverty stricken parents to my twenties to through two divorces, through failed businesses, through, you know, almost killing myself to finding my first bars class and my first foundation class to now running a multi six figure business, being a successful certified facilitator, getting to work with all of you, talk to all of you, living in Panama in a totally different country, learning a new language, having financial peace. That's a miracle. And, and that's an indicator of the power and the strength and the capacity for choice that I have. But what are your indicators that you haven't looked at yet? One of my first indicators of my capacity for choice and power was the amount of financial shit I'd created for myself. That was one of my first indicators. Of course, I judged myself for it nonstop for the first three years of Access Consciousness. And then I got into the How to Become Money Workbook. Best workbook ever, $35 investment that'll change everything. And he talked about how, look, if you can create shit, you can create magic. You just haven't chosen it yet. And I started to really look at that. I was like, huh, yeah, it does take an immense amount of power to create financial shit. That was one of my first indicators of like, I never saw the shit in my life as a gift until that moment. And then I did. And I was like, huh, what could I create with that amount of power and choice that I haven't chosen yet? So that's true about you too. And so I guess the last thing to get is that you're powerful, which circles back around to the first point. You can have whatever you'd like to have. The menu is broad. Adding more consciousness gives you access to a menu of possible choices that you may have never considered. Choices that you can actually choose. You can actually have. I never knew that I could choose ease. Turns out you can. I never knew that you could choose to receive more. Turns out you can. I never knew that you could choose to have money. I thought money came in, you spent it, you just struggle all the time. That was my learning. That was what I learned about money. Survive, survive, survive. Turns out there's other choices there. You can get access to as much consciousness as you'd like. So what consciousness would give you more access to you? To what's really true for you? To what would be and reveal and expose the beautiful energy underneath what may on the surface not look so beautiful. How much more consciousness could you add to your life to get access to what you're truly capable of? And what's really true about you that you haven't even really looked at yet because maybe you've been distracted by what you judge is true. I still face that on a daily basis. And I always find out that what I judge is true is never true. And what's right underneath that is way more beautiful than I had been willing to know. So what's beautiful about you that you haven't wanted to know? And how much more consciousness could you add to your life to get access to it? If you'd like that, I have a foundation class starting on September 2nd and you are welcome. If you knew not this, what would be possible? If you added a greater menu, a greater space, a greater energy, greater consciousness to your world, what would you get access to? Who and what are you really? And what's truly possible for you? See you next.
next week.